Welcome everyone to the Kim English Coaches Show. I'm Bill Roland along with the head coach of the George Mason men's basketball team, Kim English. I want to thank our sponsors, of course, SN Mortgage and also Glory Days Grill. And coach, it's now time at the end of the year. We'll get to the A-10 tournament and talk about that. But let's go back to the last week here. Three games in seven days last week. So we'll just start all the way back uh, on Sunday where you guys played against GW here at home. A good comeback win for your team. You held them to just one point over the last five or so minutes. Talk about the defense that your team played. You gave up 77 the first time I think you guys played over at their place, but only 62 in that game. Yeah, we guarded. We, 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 you know, we, we guarded. We've been, been trying to you know, continue to build our defensive identity, what it's going to be, what it needs to be for us to have the success. Um, you know, we're going to have – uh, you know, that game, we got stops on command. I think think we did a really good job when their two main guys in Bishop and Bamasil, you know, made them make tough shots. And, um, you know, just the, the, the cumulative approach, they missed some open ones late, but we ended the game with, with, with 10 straight stops and um, it was a great win for us to avenge the earlier loss that was pr probably our most disappointing loss of the season. You guys have talked about getting three straight stops at different points in the game. To get 10 in a row at the end, I mean, that's, you're doing what you're supposed to do at that point. Yeah, that's good. Usually if you can get three consecutive stops uh, three times per half, so six times a game, anything over six times a game, you put yourself in position to hold teams um, in the 60s and, 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 and give yourself the best chance to win. What was it in that game that, that you guys did – not necessarily differently, but maybe it was just effort or having Josh back. You've said that Josh makes a difference not only on the offensive side, but what you can do defensively. But it seemed like Bamisell had a much more difficult time getting his looks than he did in the first game. Well, he takes he takes really tough shots, and you know he makes some tough shots. Um, you know we you know it's 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 been a struggle. You know building the habits. You know all season. It's just and it, it takes time. You know one of my favorite lines in coaching is Tony Bennett. When he was at Virginia, um, you know, it was a different era in college basketball, but he said it was year three, and he said, you know, we, we, our pack line defense is finally in. You know, that's, that's, coaches usually say, oh, we put that in, we put that in, we have that in. It's, it takes time to really get the habits to where they need to be consistently. Um, you know, we did a better job closing out to him with high hands in those waning uh, moments having Josh obviously helps on both ends of the court. You know, you know he got to play. He wasn't in foul trouble. wasn't guarding a big offensive threat. But um, yeah, no, having him helps obviously. You talk about that as far as being able to put your defense in and the things that you want to do. Have you seen from day one or game one to now, right before the tournament, have you seen progress in what you've wanted to do? Or are there still things? that frustrates you every day in practice yeah, or games or whatever? Absolutely, there's progress. It's just getting it to the point where it's, it's obvious we know it, right? It's obvious it's getting that intelligence and that knowledge and those habits onto the court. Um, you know, and it's something you have to figure out with each team. But, you know, the other, I mean, it was skipping games, but simply closing out to shooters with a high hand consistently every single time. Um, absolute, n no questions asked. It's just what you do. We still have guys closing out with low hands, some, and ultimately that falls on us. You know, we have to get it to that point, and we will. Um, you know, but it's just not there yet. Is that a matter of, again, you, you talk about the high hands, and you're referencing the UMass game, which we'll get to, but you can go back to at the beginning of the year, the first loss of the season at James Madison. It was the same thing, not closing out. Is it just a matter of guys having to go through this in games? Because you know it. Unfortunately, yeah. You know, I, uh, you say you don't. I, I don't need my butt kicked to learn a lesson, <laughs> like you know. So I, I don't, I don't need, I don't need losses to learn that, you know, you need high hands on Vado Morse, you know, with 21 seconds at James Madison up one point. I don't need to know that. Like I know that, you know, I can be on the sideline raising my hand as Vado Morse is bouncing the ball, um, you know. But, but I do need to make sure Malik Henry knows it, right? So that he knows, right? Um, you know, tie game at Richmond, Jacob Gilliard, top of the key, Blake Jones. I know you need to rush him in that moment and get all the way up in it. But Blake Jones needs to know it, you know. And that's the essence of coaching. Um, on a lot of teams I've been on, it's 
it's kind of what you need, you know, to go through it and, and have something to draw back from so that it matters to them. Like, right. it's, yeah, like when we watch these clips, am I upset? Am I frustrated? Absolutely. But the truth is, it doesn't mean anything for me to be upset. They, the, 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 the actual players, have to be upset by the outcome for, for true change to take place. But you, you talk about that you don't need to, to know that, but you played 130-some college basketball games. Some of these guys, it, they're barely you know, 20, 30. You talk about Blake Jones, he wasn't even you know, 30 games into his college career at that Absolutely. point. So is it a, a matter of that they need to – by the time they are juniors and seniors or whatever it is, well, that, that should be automatic. Well, I mean, is there, a, is there a, I guess, is there a growth learning process? I, I, I think there is. There has to be. You know, we're not, we're not losing. We're learning. But, you know, I think it can, be, it can get done just with an excellent sense of urgency and practice. Okay. Just practice this way, knowing hair on fire, because know this matters, because we say it matters. It, 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 it is why teams win. It is why teams lose. Um, you know, and we got to get to it. And, and, and also, it's giving them grace. Like, they are they're great kids. They are phenomenal kids. And it's a lot of retention. You right. know, we only focus on basketball. They have class, right? They have finals. They have exams. They have community service. They have personal lives. They, we, 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 have, we have basketball. You know, so, um, you know, it, it, it's finding ways, creative ways, to just get the messaging across so the intelligence is on, on the court. And, and, and guys are, are executing and making the right plays at the right time. All right, let's go to Wednesday down at Davidson. You guys were only down four at halftime, and then a little bit of a tough stretch coming out of halftime allowed them to push the lead out, kind of played back and forth with them for there. For 35 minutes of that game, you guys are in it. It was just that one five-minute stretch that it kind of got away from you. Yeah, I think a couple of stretches I point to. We were up eight. Um, we were up eight. Um, 21-13. 21-13, and it was 12-41 on the clock. I wanted to get Josh a 41-second break. Um, they went on a bit of a run there, and obviously the, 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 the dead ball doesn't always happen when you need it to at 59. Right. Uh, they, they, they went on, a, I think, a 7-0 or 8-0 run. Then um, it was a stretch. We're up two with maybe two minutes to go to end the half, and um, – you know, that, that's kind of been something I'm learning and figuring out with this team is when to call those timeouts to kind of regroup the troops, right? I did it at home against UMass in half. I'm like, at 1.30, we're up eight. We're going to halftime up eight, nine, or ten. Like, we're not going in half up seven, you know? So, high hand closeouts, <laughs> uh, box outs, rebound with two hands, ball security, and great shots for this minute and 30 seconds. Um, I think our group needs that. And they ended up going up two, um, at the end of the half against uh, at Davidson, and then a freak play, kid loses the ball, throws it up, buzzer goes up four, um, which is nothing, right? Which right. is nothing. But yeah, they, they 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 came out and executed really well. We didn't, and that was the cushion they needed to win the game. We fouled at the end to push it to nine, eleven, whatever it ended up being. That was to me one of the more I'm not going to say poor games that he played, but frustrating games. You could see it in his face talking about Josh Oduro. I think he finished four for 17. They did a really good job of being physical with him, and they have the, the, the talent and the guys to do that. What did you talk to Josh about after that game as far as letting the frustration get in? It looked like he forced some things at times because of the frustration. He was foul. He was playing post-defense with the knee in his butt, um, and they were physical, um, but it wasn't legal physicality, and that's unfortunate. Uh, but he has to continue to be better. Like I said, J Josh is scratching the surface. His ups and downs, like they may look, you know, um, you know, I, I, I see the areas of growth for Josh, and it is to be able to, and, and he, he shows it, right? He, he can take a poor game and bounce back the next and, 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 and fix something just like that. Um, but, yeah, finding ways to play through physicality, and be better. We watched the film that we we actually he and I watched a film on that flight back from uh, North Carolina, and just showed areas that that, that that he can be better. Got good balance scoring that game. Four different guys got into double figures, which is kind of the standard. Everybody had eleven, but there wasn't one guy that was able to take over the game it, for them in the first half. Lee kind of took over the game and brought them back. In the second half, it was Brykovich that kind of took over. 
you guys still seem to be searching at times for that one guy that can that can take over in a stretch. Yeah, I don't really. It's it's not about the offense. You know, it's not about the offense. You know, for the most part, we held them under 70, which was enough. You know, they they usually in their losses, I think they score under 70. We fouled them at the end, which got them to 72, maybe. Um, for us, the offense takes care of itself if our defense is right. You know, we did a pretty good job keeping them off the three-point line, and it was a different defensive game plan we took into that game. But because it was so new, it was so different, the only, the only other time we did it was at Richmond where we had kind of a one-man zone, um, not guarding their non-shooting bigs on the perimeter. But if you're going to do that and if you're going to sell out to take away the three, that one-man zone has to be there to protect the rim. They had got a couple of direct passes for layups because it is different. But the, the, we had some game plan errors. You know, uh, number three, Meninga, he is um, incapable of scoring with his right hand. Um, and we still allowed him to score with his, his left um, a few times. They, in the second half, they, they, they crashed the glass. You know, we, 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 we dropped from the, I think we dropped from like number 10 in the country to 30. And our defensive rebound percentage, back-to-back -back games now, we've got punched on the glass. And that's unacceptable, and that's, that's something we got to change and get better at. All right, let's jump to UMass, the last regular season home game. And I tell you what, these two teams, for whatever reason, I know this was only your second meeting with them, but six times now in the last ten meetings, the game's gone to overtime. It's uncanny how things end. So let's start with the, the last play of regulation, that last little series. You guys got a great look from Deshaun. To, would have won the game a little corner three. They get a run out. There's no contact really, but a 60 foot heave at the end that a whistle blows right about the same time the horn went off. Talk to me about what was going through your mind at the time because one official from the other side of the floor had a foul called on Deshaun or he thought there was and it was a long, long conversation. Yeah, I, um, yeah it was, um, you know, I had the ball and I told Deshaun after the St. Louis game, you know, I, had the ball in someone else's hands. I told him we ever have the opportunity to put the ball in his hands and let him make a play, especially it being senior night. Um, it's a play we haven't ran all year. It's a play I stole from College of Charleston in maybe 2018. It's a little sneaky slip out play to get a corner three. Um, you know, probably from that corner, probably should have ran it for Coop. He's better going to that shoulder as Deshaun's better going to his other shoulder. But we knew we'd get the shot. Probably should have drawn up something to get to the rim to put put pressure on the officials to make a foul call. Um, but you live with your best players taking a shot to it's win the game. Look. It was a good look. Yeah. He missed it. Um, you know, now when I seen the collision on the shot, I did not feel good. I did not feel good. The refs con conferred. One of the officials said he called a foul. And I immediately went to our iPad and said, I want to see him call a foul. And they conferred. They said, and it, it was true, the kid lunge forward and he stepped on Deshaun's foot. Deshaun was in his legal cylinder. The kid stepped on his foot, which, and, and, and no foul was called. Yeah, they, they, what the explanation they came and told us was that because the defender was retreating, yeah. that there wasn't, but that was one of those things that took them a long time to come to that decision. What, what's your conversation on the bench like with the guys as you're going through all that? Um, just focus on overtime, you know, because if it was a foul, it's out of our. It's it's out of your hands at that point. It was right. just our, our talk was on overtime. When you get into overtime, you guys get up four. They come back, and here's where you're talking about high hands again. Fernandez mm -hmm. for them. No Fernandez who had a great game uh, mm -hmm. for UMass. Um, hits a three to cut it to one. Yeah. You guys come back down. Run. I think was one of the the best sets that I, I think you ran that entire game. Maybe the, part of the entire season where you get Josh on the block. His defenders buried. And it just rolled off the rim would have put you guys up three. That was a yeah. huge momentum difference. Yeah, it's, it's it's tough as a coach. You have to learn it as a young coach. You have to learn it how you're just your, from from a philosophical standpoint. But also, I think coaches have to learn it every year with how your team is. And I think it's set what this team is. But when you make a big shot, you know, put us up four. I think for this team, I need to call a timeout of that moment and regroup and re-remind about high hand closeouts against Noah Fernandez. Get everybody on the same page in our pick and roll defense. Uh, re-remind everyone you need to box out. Re-remind everyone you need to rebound with two hands. Things that are obvious, these things you just have to do to play basketball. Philosophically, as a player, I like the big game-changing basket and the roar of the crowd with the commotion and the chaos from the other team. Do they call a timeout? Do they try to? 
Are they scrambling? You know, I, I'd like to think that we know we need to have a high hand against Noah Fernandez. Our defensive ball screen coverage is set. Everyone knows it every moment in the game. We have a card system that's telling you exactly what we're doing. Um, this team needs re-reminding. And, um, you know, that was a moment of, 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 that it was clear. Um, you know, he made a great shot. He was the best shooter in the gym at that moment. Um, we, 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 we close out with low hands. He made, a, he, he made a shot. And, again, that's on us. We have to keep hammering that fact home. Um, we came down. We ran the play early in the game. Josh had it under the basket twice, actually, and he scored both times. You know, once he did it early, he, he came back down and he took a three, which was kind of not, you know, at the time of the game, I thought he, really, he had really had an advantage inside. And, and again, he, you know, he missed a point blank layup. He's made countless. Well, I'm sure not if, this, point if blank the same layups. situation came up oh, again, yeah. you ran, you'd no, love you to have that yeah, same shot. Yeah, you get Josh Shaduro under the rim, uh, uncontested. It's, you feel good about it. He missed it. They came down. We didn't, we didn't execute our ball screen coverage um, well. It was, and, um, and, uh, and, and Buttrick made a nice pull-up two-point jump shot um, to, to, to give them the lead. Yeah. Well, before we get to the A-10 tournament, I um, want to ask you real quick, you talked about these are things that you need to call the timeout. Are you now going into the tournament? Is that something where you're going to say, I can't let them play through it anymore? Might we see timeouts come yeah, a little I've, bit more I've often? Done it. I've done it. I've done it some. I've done it. At, I did it at the end of the GW game. You know, we were down. I came down. I, I told the ref. I said, if we score here, I want a timeout. Boom. Deshaun made a top to key three. Timeout. Did it. Reset. I did it at the, I did it at the end of the first half of UMass. You know, I've, I've, I've done it some. I'm, 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 it's, I've made the conscious decision. It's what this team needs. It, so you're not, we may not get our, our, our use it or lose it timeout, you know, at the last play of the first half. You know, it may come at a different time. You know, um, I feel like against Navy, I did it early in the game. Um, that, that's kind of been the thing I've beat myself up the most about this season is moments in the game where I could have, and it's, it's, it served us well, honestly. I did it at St. Joe's and it ended up being our last time out of the game. But I felt like the rest and the regroup was good enough because I knew it was going to be a foul game. So you can get play calls in during free throws. You don't really need to, to draw it up. Um, so again, it may be different next season. I think this team needs that. All right, we'll talk about the A-10 tournament. First, we want to thank our sponsors again, SN Mortgage Company. George Mason Basketball Coaches Show with Kim English is presented by SN Mortgage Company. SN Mortgage Company, start your journey home today. Security National Mortgage Company is an equal housing lender company. NMLS 3116. All right, also want to thank Glory Days Grill as well. Let's get to the A-10 tournament. Um, before we talk about your matchup, you've got to feel going into this, like you guys have a good – a chance as anybody to win. We talked about Davidson. They're going to be the top seed. You guys played with them for probably, again, 30, 35 minutes on their home floor on senior night. It'll be a different thing down at Capital One Arena. You beat the number two seed. Um, you had uh, a, a lead on the road against the number three seed in Virginia Commonwealth. You beat the number four seed. You went to double overtime with the number five seed. And we can go up and down the teams that are seated ahead of you. You've got to feel pretty confident going into this thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and yeah. We All season long, there's, there's not been a game this season we haven't sat down on that bench. We, we went into it not expecting to win. Not one. Not at Kansas with eight guys. Like, not one game we haven't expected to win, trusted our game plan to win. You know, I still, I still feel like we've been beat three times. I still, to this day, like maybe I'm crazy, right? But, you know, Nevada, VCU at home and Old Dominion are the only games that we got beat. And no game have we executed and played well and, 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 and haven't won. So we're, we're, we are, you know, in our, and as frustrating as it is, it's now about the getting the guys, you know, to believe it. You know, you know, 14 and 15, 7 and 9. But, I mean, you know, we were talking one and two possessions. Right. And it, it is a completely different change to the season. And, you know, for me, I look at it as things that I've done. Right. I look at that, that, that variance 
of those close losses and close wins if what could I have done better? But we want to build a program where everyone in the program thinks like that, right? I want the individual player, and it's good. It's getting there. You know, when I'm in the locker room the other night against UMass, you know, putting it all on my shoulders, like that timeout, that lack of a timeout reigns heavy on me. Obviously, I called the timeout to give us a tech at the end of the game. You know, um, like that stuff reigns heavy on me. But as I'm taking the blame, as I'm looking around the room, I see guys shaking their heads like, like, no, it ain't. It ain't on you. Right. And that's that's what you want. Right. That's how I was as a player. No law. I mean, it wasn't Mike Anderson or Frank Hafe. They weren't out there playing. It was I'm out there like, you know, so we're, we're moving in the right direction for sure as we're getting that that collective ownership amongst the group. All right. So you open up noon on Thursday in the eight nine game. You play Fordham. The only time you played them this year was up at their place, and it was basically, as they call it, a rock fight. It ended up 50-47. to 47. That was the game that we saw Fordham basically play almost like you said, the one-man zone type thing where they were going to let Xavier Johnson shoot as much as he wanted to. He ends up taking a career-high 14 threes. He made five of them, 16 shots overall. I imagine that you've probably gone back and looked at that film and tried to figure out other ways that you can get guys involved because I know he was in foul trouble, but – to me, Devontae Gaines needs to take more than two shots in a game. I mean, he's just one of your, your offensive leaders. He's one of the four guys that average double figures. So I'm sure you've gone back and looked at those things. Yeah, we'll be better. We'll be better. Uh, we'll have, a, we'll have a, a game plan to attack it. Um, again, you talk about <laughs> – you, you, know, you find yourself – 47 points was enough to beat him on that night. Right. You know, you talk about it. Uh, and you had a three to tie the game at the end. You got a good look. Yeah, yeah, Maul had a really good look at the top of the key. Um, we, um, yeah, we'll do some things differently defensively to, 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 to exploit their um, quirky defensive uh, alignment or style. And, and, and we'll, we'll still change some things defensively. They ran a play, a very simple play that we have seen all season. I feel like every team in the Atlantic 10 runs it. And, you know, we know how to guard it. We gave up nine points on that play. Nine points. In a 50-point game is a lot. You yeah. know, it's 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 20% of, of their points on, on that one play. Um, you know, you know, Novinsky made his lone three, his first three in a 10 play. It was some things. Ohams made some incredibly tough shots that game. But you know, we'll be better. We'll be better with our game plan. We're we'll be better with our shot selection. We took a lead late in that game. Deshaun came down and took a tough three right in front of our bench. Jamal was wide open in the corner. Um, they'll see it. We, we had plenty of opportunities uh, to win. But Fordham plays really hard. I have much respect for what Kyle has done. I think he should be a candidate for, 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 for coach of the year. Um, we'll vote on all that stuff here in a little bit. But um, he's done a great job at Fordham in his first season. I would think he'd have to be the front runner for that, considering where they were and, and what he's done with them. It's yeah, a pretty good job. Anthony Grant, with Anthony Grant, that he's coaching the youngest team in the league, youngest team in the country. He's coaching the youngest team in the country, and would they finish? They finished second. Is the two that, yeah. that 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 is incredible? What what uh what what Kyle has done, what Travis Ford has done, losing that kid early. Um, you know, Davidson lost a lot. What he what he's done. So. I think uh, we what we've always known is it's a lot of really good coaches in this league. Um, but I think those one we just named have done a tremendous job this season. I would imagine to you guys outside of X in that game, the rest of the team just two of 14 from three. You didn't, I mean, let's face it, the way you guys have shot the ball this year, you're not even expecting that same thing to happen. I mean, yeah. game to game in a one game thing, certainly it could, but Law of averages would say you're going to shoot better than that. Yeah, we got some good looks. We got some good looks. And um, I feel better about what our offensive plan going into. We were, you know, we were, it was after the v VC. I don't remember who we played before. We were locked into defense. We've, we had, like, defensive practice. All of our practices since whoever we played before St. Joe's, at St. Joe's, you know, we, we, it's been just defense, 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 maybe VCU. I think we played home VCU yeah, before been. St. Joe's. Our practices have all been defensive focused. Like we're going to get the ethos of the group defensively right um, going into March, going into – and the offense will take care of itself. We have space. We have shooting. We have a really good system. 
Uh, we have good players. We got a guard, and the offense will take care of itself. And the last time you guys played, Ronnie Polite was not available. He's back, and I'm assuming available here for the A-10 tournament. So that's another yeah. another aspect that you have in, in, yeah. in your arsenal there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, before we move on, update on Blake Jones. Uh, he's good. He's moving in the right direction. He should, should be fine. Okay. He's got the wind knocked out of him, unfortunately. It was a great defensive play by him, and that, that's, that's growth. You know, you, if you, you watch us, you know, we, we do a really good job playing off of two feet on our drives, and we do a really good job shot faking at the end of our drives, and it's usually other teams that are flying all over the place, right? You know, and on the flip side, we want to have great shot fake discipline. We don't want to be leaving our feet going for shot fakes. We want to stay down and be solid and fundamentally sound. Um, you know, and you know, Malik is bouncy and athletic, but he far too often leaves his feet trying to block shots and go for shot fakes, or when he's vertical, come down with it. And, and, and we don't want to do that. So Blake Jones, the play he got hurt, did a tremendous job walling up Greg Jones, being solid, did not go for the shot fake at all. But on that play, took it. He took a shoulder to the sternum. And if there are any athletes out there, um, that ended my football career. <laughs> I got a helmet to the, to, the, to the midsection, and all the wind came out of me. And uh, that, that's what happened to him. Yeah, it, was, it was a scary moment because, of course, you get the rebound, you go the other way, and, and Deshaun made a great play at three-point line, kind of faked and then spun and got a great layup, and immediately the whistle blows. You look back, and Blake's kind of got his hands on his knees, and, and I didn't see in the moment what had happened because I'm following the action. And then he goes down right in front of the bench, and you have all these flashbacks of all these different things that had happened. But thankfully, yeah. it was just getting the wind knocked out of him. Yeah, no, yeah, it wasn't a good, you know, it wasn't a good look looking at his face in that moment as he was trying to grasp for air. But he gave him space, and eventually he did, and he he gave a smile. He was saying, "I'm okay." <laughs> it is, it's a great, as bad as it feels to get the wind knocked out of you, when you get the wind back in you, it's a really good feeling. It's kind of like yeah. when you lose, when you get relief from the Charlie horse. Right. It's, it's a good feeling. Right. Um, you talked about it a little bit, but I was really impressed with uh, Deshaun after the UMass game in the, in the post-game press conference when he said, at this point, it doesn't matter what our record is overall. It doesn't matter what our conference record was. We're 0-0, and that's the mentality we have to take going into Capital One Arena. He basically yeah. said the team had talked about it. Yeah. Our record is 0-0. Zero and zero. Yeah, we, that was going to be my speech, win or loss that the record was zero and zero. If we were 15 and 14 or 14 and 15, um, you know, you, you'd, you'd probably not want to play UMass again. It's hard to beat a team three times. Um, new opponent, Fordham, you know, a team we lost, you know, to get to avenge that loss. But it's the truth, you know, it, it's, 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 you know, it's everyone in the nation right now. You know, there's there, there 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 are 68 teams out there that will get to play on, you know, after this tournament. But it's a one-game season. It's a one-game season, and the season can be as long as you want it to be, as long as you make it, um, or it can be 40 minutes. And the collective ownership, energy, uh, enthusiasm, passion of the group has to be ready. You know, I've I won two conference tournaments as a player. Uh, Nate, and when he was a senior at Colorado, they won four games in four days uh, to win the Pac-12 tournament. Coach Felton, when he was at Georgia, they won four games in three days. Twice in um, one day. Yeah, yeah, two games in one day, four games in three days. Uh, Isaiah Tate has won a conference tournament. Uh, you know, we have, so it's it's guys that have done it know what it takes. You know, it's about this group making the decision that 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 we just want to be one and zero. We just want to be 1-0 and against Fordham at uh, 12 o'clock on Thursday, and we'll regroup from there and then focus on Davidson. And it's not like you guys haven't won four games in a row before, which is what you'd have to do. I mean, open up the season with four straight victories. Yeah. So, all right, once again, we want to thank our sponsors for today's show. The George Mason Basketball Coaches Show with Kim English is presented by SN Mortgage Company. SN Mortgage Company, start your journey home today. Security National Mortgage Company is an equal housing lender company. NMLS 3116. All right, Coach, I want to kind of wrap up today's Coaches Show by not necessarily talking about basketball, but I want you to talk about the seniors that you had this year. And obviously basketball is a big part of their lives, and I'm sure most of them want to go and continue on playing basketball when they're done. 
but you've got to know them not only on the court but off the court. Some of them you know better than others, obviously, having coached Deshaun in the past. But just talk to me about what type of guys these are. Let's start with Blake Buchanan, who came from Wake Forest as a walk-on, came here as a walk-on, and has actually worked his way into getting minutes now. Yeah, he. Uh, all four of those guys, I ask this question of uh, people in recruiting all the time, and their response immediately tells you a lot about the kid's character. But if someone were to ask me, would I be happy if my daughters brought home Blake Buchanan, Davon Cooper, Deshaun Schwartz, Jamal Hartwell, I'd be elated in a heartbeat. They're four tremendous young men, really good students, great students, um, exceptional teammates, good basketball players, and, and great young men. Like they, they're going to go on and be great citizens. They're going to, you know, make George Mason proud with whatever they do post Mason. Um, Blake's special. You know, he epitomizes what we value in our program, toughness, competitiveness, work ethic, humility. And I said early on, I stopped one of our first practices. He was playing his butt off. And I said, right now, Blake, jo Blake Buchanan is in our top eight. He is in our top eight. He is in the rotation. I switched his jersey, put him on the first team in practice, you know, because he deserved it. And over time, you know, you lose sight of that. You start, you know, a dunk here or a three-point shot there. Well, kind of, you know, we're all suckers for talent. but. He epitomizes what matters most in his program, what matters most in winning. And i um, really proud of him. Uh, he's been great for us. He's had his mishaps. He has his athletic, uh, um, you know, uh, limits, right? But uh, he's a great kid, a great teammate. Really, really, really uh, fortunate to have him. All right, let's talk about Jamal Hartwell. Jamal, I, I got to see Jamal in high school. I was recruiting his teammate, Ethan Anderson, when I was at Colorado. He ended up going to play at USC. Jamal at Fairfax High School in uh, Los Angeles. So I had a familiarity with him as a, as a small uh, shooter from L.A. when I got here. I was really excited about him. He had some really good practices and workouts, shooting the ball. Um, you know, I, I, I thought he'd have a bigger impact on this team because he really shot the ball really, really, really well in our practices. And well, he was number one in A-10 play last year. Yeah. He shot 47% in conference play. And he had moments, he had moments, that's right, and he had moments early in the season um, where he, he shot the ball well. Um, you know, he, he struggled a bit defensively this year, but I, I just believe in him, even still now. He's going to play. He's going to play against, uh, I just, it has to turn around for him. He's not a 29% three-point shooter. Like he's a really good shooter, uh, and he's a great kid. Yeah, you know, we uh, he he's he's grown this season. You know, I've, he's quiet. He's yeah. quiet in nature. He is, uh, and he's tough. You know, it's, he he has a toughness in him, and it's beyond any toughness that has to do with basketball. Um, you know, he's lost a parent. You know, he's lost a mother. You know, so, you know, I can't imagine what he's gone through living his life, you know, without his mom. Um, I think of him, especially on Mother's Day, and uh, I just love him to death. We, I, I jumped in practice the other day, and um, I jumped in the one-on-one -on -one segment, and I kind of gave Jamal some buckets. And, um, and we always, you know, took talk at the conclusion of practice, and I asked Jamal why he played so hard today like he played harder in that practice he fought harder in practice than I'd sit honestly than I'd seen him fight in a long time and I asked him why I said why do you why do you play so hard today he said because you jumped in practice and I was like was that personal he was like yeah and I was like you want to play me and we did we checked it up we played a game to three and he fought his butt off and um, doesn't sound like he won though and uh well it was two to two, and I didn't want to just back him down and lay it up. I could have. I wanted to win with a jump shot. I wanted to beat him on a, you know, I wanted to make the game even. And um, everyone on the team, I stopped it at two to two. I said, if you think Jamal's going to win, get on that side. And everybody on the team got on <laughs> Jamal's side. And um, I'm trying to win with a jump shot, and I was missing. And finally, Jamal made like a step back three over my hand. And the gym erupted. The gym erupted, and everyone on the team went and tackled Jamal and picked him up. And it was a great moment. 
um, just for the morale of the team, and he fought his butt off. And, like, I would have waged everything I had that he would have had a great game on senior night. Um, you know, and he didn't. But uh, I, I think some, I think we're going to get something special from Jamal on this, this, this stretch to end the season. All right, let's talk about uh, Davon Cooper. Coop's a great kid. He's uh, another great kid. Uh, you know, he's played in the NCAA tournament. He's, he's, a, he, he's someone, you know, he's the only player on our team who has won a conference tournament uh, championship. Deshaun lost to Oregon State in the championship game last season. Uh, obviously, he's a great shooter, good size. He, he, he's, been, he's been, you know, it's, it's, it's a change in level from the Ohio Valley to the, to the Atlantic 10 Conference. Uh, to play for our staff, we, we, it's, a, it's a high standard from, uh, from a conditioning standpoint. He, he, he battled a conditioning bug this season. I felt like at Kansas, he, he had one of his better games of the season at Kansas, and I feel like he was hitting his stride. We were getting over the hump from a conditioning standpoint, and then we had the COVID shutdown, and, and you, it's, it's a lot harder to get in shape than it is to get out of shape. And he lost it. You know, he lost it the next game with GW. He's been up and down, and, you know, he's playing maybe more minutes than he should. Um, our depth isn't where it needs to be for me to comfortably play guys um, enough minutes to keep our play where I think it needs to be. And, uh, but he's fought. He's battled. Um, you know, he's humble. He listens. He learns. He accepts coaching. You know, I, I told him his, you know, getting driven by Rich Kelly twice in the second half for the last game was unacceptable. If you want to be able to be a professional basketball player, you have to be able to guard Rich Kelly from UMass um, with no help. And, um, you know, he said he heard me and it meant something to him. Um, I got to get him more shots. He's shooting the ball really well. And uh, love Coop. Love Coop. He's going to have a lot of success. Um, his future's still up in the air. If he wants to come back, you know, if he wants to uh, turn pro. He, uh, he's made some big-time shots for you guys this yes. year as well. Yes. And it's amazing. He and the next guy we're going to talk about have a chance, depending on how they do in the 8th tournament, to both of them in the same season finish in the top five of three-pointers made in a single season in Mason history. And you're talking about names like Lamar Butler, who they've passed this last game. And um, there's some pretty big-time names on there. And these guys are both going to be in the top five. So let's talk about Deshaun Schwartz now, the guy that you did coach in his yeah. past. Deshaun chose George Mason over a lot of good programs. Gonzaga, USC, Ohio State, Clemson, uh, San Diego State, BYU. He chose to come here. He chose to come here to play for us. Um, you know, he, he knew we had high hopes and, and high ambitions to, to be an NCAA tournament team. Um, and that large team, um, we fell short of that. Um, but still have an opportunity to get a lot of the things we talked about uh, and – it's, I have great respect for what he did. He came here to help us build this thing, you know, and, and our roster in the future will look completely different. And, um, you know, our play will look completely different as we are deeper and with different guys. And, but, you know, I hope that when we do get this program where it is, he's remembered as a really big part of the beginning of it all. Uh, because it is really important that Justin Fernandez, you know, and Josh Adoro got a chance to be teammates with Deshaun Schwartz. And uh, uh, he's grown. And th this season has been a great, a great, it's been a good bridge for him as he embarks on his professional journey. You know, he's never left Colorado for him to come all the way to the East Coast. Had breakfast with he and his dad Sunday morning in D.C. And he just, he loves it. He loves the East Coast. He loves the DMV, and now he's ready. He's ready to be a pro. I'm not sure I could. Have, I, I'm not sure he was ready before this season. I think this season um, helped prepare him to go and be a successful pro. Now, one of his hobbies is to make tracks. That's what the nickname is for people. Did he ever? Did you ever throw down a couple of beats for you at all during the season? Have you asked him? No, to? He, yeah, I mean, he, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't. I, he's uh, no, he doesn't throw down any beats for me. But uh, um, he's a special kid. Uh, in my seven years, he's he's one. He's in the top of my favorite kids that I've ever coached, and um, you know, probably be invited into the to the Portsmouth NBA, um, you know, pre-draft deal in, in in Portsmouth, Virginia. And uh, he has a very bright future. 
All right, well, let's close it out with reminding everybody, noon, Thursday, Fordham, Capital One Arena. We need as many local fans out there as possible because that's a, it's a tough tip-off time um, to play that first game of the, of the, of the day. Yeah, well, you know, you, you, this time of the year, all those, all, you never know those times, hit or miss with, you know, attendance and all that stuff. You know, I said in my senior year, we went on a run where we won in three games in three days, but we talked about energy, defense, and rebounding. Energy, bring your own energy, lock in on defense, and, and, and rebound the basketball. And if you do those two things, the offense stuff takes care of itself. It, it, players don't want to believe it, but – just like Newton's law of gravity, I think it is a law in basketball. If you completely buy into how hard you play and focusing on defense and hustle and caring about your team and winning yourself, the basketball gods will reward you with offense. I was watching the NBA game the other night, Malik Monk from the Lakers. The ball was on a beeline to his offensive baseline. And Malik Monk ran his absolute hardest to catch that ball and he, just before it touched the baseline, he, he rolled the ball back. He rolled the ball back. He saved it. A teammate happened to pick it up. They swung it around. Malik Monk got to the opposite corner. Malik Monk got a wide open three. He was not thinking about making a three when he made that play. Right. So this time of the year, more than others, any other, you lock into your, your, your passion, your emotion, your energy, your defense, and your rebounding, and the offense will take care of itself. That's a great way to end it, Coach. Good luck. We All will right. see you out there, Capital One Arena, on Thursday. Thank you. That's going to do it for the Kim English Coaches Show. Thanks again to our sponsors, SN Mortgage Company and Glory Days Grill. We hope that we'll see everybody out at Capital One Arena Thursday noon tip-off as the Patriots will take on Fordham to start the A-10 tournament.